All right, so the entrance to Drangley Castle is in the Shaded Woods. And the only way that you're gonna guess that is by looking in the distance for the big black tower, which we can only assume is Drangley Castle. I'm pretty sure if I looked up in the sky right here, I would actually see that tower again. Because, yeah, as I said, entrance is right here. For now, we'll have to deal with rather familiar foes. The s talk proves itself to be very useful, but if you have like a great sword, you can actually take care of all of them in just one swing, if you group them right. It's one of the many reasons I really, really like great swords. They're just so versatile. Some might say they're boring, but I don't care. I like them. So, to enter Dranglai Castle, we actually need the souls of the old ones. Or, not necessarily the souls of the old ones. The entrance will be blocked, but it will open if we either have the four souls, or a soul memory of one million, which gets increased by one million for each new game plus, and you need to collect the souls in that particular cycle. So, you need to uh, collect a total of 2 million souls in New Game Plus to actually make that happen. And yeah, uh, there's another Flexile Sentry. Even though I just switched to New Game Plus, he is not exclusive to New Game Plus. But have a look at that. Poison arrows are really damn useful. A lot of people really rely on poison. Uh, this is the first time I actually use it at least in those proportions, but it's very useful, of course. Some might say it's cheesing, but it's really not. And that guy, however, does only appear in Nugan Plus. But, yeah, he's not too much more difficult than the other ones. He does respawn, though. And since we're going to Drang like Castle, you might have noticed that I'm wearing the Drangleg armor, including the Drangleg helm, which we can't have found yet. We can only find that after we've already visited Drangleg Castle. And this door is the one that would be blocked off had we not either collected 3 million souls on a new game plus plus, or all of the 4 old souls. Really, it just gives you a chance of just going through the game if you grind a lot and have trouble with one of the bosses, which you shouldn't have because the old ones are, well, they're among the more easy bosses of this game. And yet behind that rubble, by the way, is where we fought the Flexile Sentry just now. So, no, we actually have to collect all of the souls, or one million, plus one million for each new game plus, um, instead of climbing over there. It's one of the more charring things in the game, honestly, but let's not worry about that now. Because here is the last hate knight in the game. Another one with a sword, but funnily enough, he does not drop the sword. The only one who actually drops the sword is the first one. This one drops the hate knight lance. And for some reason, I seem to be having a little more trouble than I should with him, because he kind of backhands me a lot. Or he just blindly slashes, as it seems. But yeah, that guy actually drops the Hate Knight Lance. Or, if you're a New Game Plus and lucky enough, the Hate Knight Great Lance, which is a little bit of a stronger version of the Hate Knight Lance, but whatever. We don't have it. Yet. And that tunnel up ahead is actually going to lead us directly to Drangley Castle. You might have noticed that the sky was overcast before we entered it, and now it started raining. A lot of people seem to think that this is kind of a charring transition, but really, the sky gets increasingly more and more overcast as you get closer to the castle, so in my opinion, it does make sense. And this encounter should not be as difficult as I make it look here. It's just that I am not too familiar with the moveset of the S-Talk, or rather, 
I was not familiar with the fact that it had manual tracking, where you can push the analog stick in a different direction despite being locked onto an enemy and attack in a different direction, which is something usually only heavy weapons do, but hey, the Aster can do it as well. Don't think this applies to other thrusting swords though. At least not as far as I'm aware. This castle is isolated, but nonetheless you must forge on to bring an end to your journey and mine. The fact that the Emerald Herald is here, uh, behind the Shrine of Winter, where you actually need a bunch of souls to get through is something that we should question and in fact the game knows that we will and will give us an answer to that later. Meanwhile, we're gonna finally approach Drang Lake Castle for reals. In fact, we're right in front of it right now. And seeing as we are in the rain, our lightning spears should be more effective. In fact, they are. Those guys just really take quite a beating. I didn't expect them to to take that many hits though. But yeah, on New Game Plus there is a nasty little rat phantom right here. Of course he's just as nasty as every other rat phantom, which is not really very nasty. It's just that rat phantom enemies have this bad habit of just kind of having kind of sort of infinite stamina or at least way more stamina than they have any right to have, which makes dealing with them sometimes a little bit frustrating. Because to actually get in a good hit, you have to do things. Like have a lot of range, for instance. Thankfully, I am using the Dranglick Sword, which is kind of a quality weapon, which means that it scales about equally well with dexterity and strength. It's kind of a leftover of Demon Souls terminology, where quality weapons were actually one upgrade path. And this fight, the way I do it, because I take it very safe, because he actually managed to kill me twice, is something that can take quite a while. But eh, eventually, even the big ones fall. So, we can't immediately enter the castle, because the gate's locked. To enter it, we have to solve a puzzle of sorts. Now, you might have noticed that the souls did not actually go to us and increase our soul count. Instead, they went to that statue. That statue is a golem. If you don't notice that it does that, you probably will have a little bit of trouble figuring out what you're supposed to do. Because there's a second statue right here, which also absorbed the souls of an enemy we killed nearby. Of course, you are not screwed if you kill every enemy right here, because there is an enemy closet nearby. Enemies will keep spawning until the gates have opened. In fact, they're still spawning until it actually is open. Because right now we should be approached by a small group of enemies. Yes, right here they are. It's nice that they don't make us go back to the bonfire to respawn the enemies. And this right here is the enemy closet. They come out of there. There's nothing down there except for, well, a dead end, of course. And before we finally go inside, Let's have a look at the other side here, because there is a, in my opinion, really nice pyromancy. But I happen to have a weak spot for the combustion type spells. And great combustion, of course, is better than regular combustion, because it's great. 
That entire approach to the castle, by the way, is one of my favorite parts of the game. Who are you? And by whose permission do you stand before me? This castle is the domain of King Vendrick. Is your trespass intentional? His Highness. Where has he gone? A villager, as that guy's called, sells some stuff that's not bad at all. The Flamberg is one of my favorite great swords. The Lucern is kind of shitty, but a new game plus plus. And yes, plus plus. He also sells some of the Covenant rewards, which I am all buying. Because, really, I, I want them. I didn't have them yet. Gone so soon. Be safe on your travels. Up that stairs behind Veliger is the throne room. We could go there now, but I don't wanna. There's something in there that only appears in New Game Plus, but otherwise it's empty. And that one thing that only appears in New Game Plus, we'll be checking that out in the future at some point. For now though, we're just gonna leave it be. Anyway, you probably noticed that I skipped almost all of Veliger's dialogue, except his introduction, basically. Um... That's because he has a lot to say and quite a lore bomb to drop on us. Thankfully, there is a part a little bit later into the video, not far though, where I will have a good opportunity to actually play that dialogue. And that spell you just saw me use there was Life Drain Patch. It creates a an orb of darkness. It can deal a lot of damage to enemies as long as they touch it. It does of course also damage us. It does also damage allies. And we're just gonna ignore those enemies over there. In fact, we're going to ignore everything that's over there because there's nothing over there. Absolutely nothing. It's not worth it. You can just go to the right here and... Well, you're gonna have to deal with less enemies, let's put it that way. And this room, well... First time around I found it kind of creepy, but those statues? Hey, they don't move. That's kind of nice. And down there, red phantoms will be spawning to attack us in New Game Plus, but we don't need to go there for a while, so we're not gonna deal with them, of course. But now we're gonna, well, go into one of the more annoying rooms of the game. It's really, really simple, if you just want to get through, but this is a let's play. I, of course, will want to show you everything there is in it. Now, those doors, of course, they are golems. Quote, unquote, obviously. Um, you need to fuel the doors with souls to open. And, of course, only one door will actually lead you to progress. The others lead you to motherfucking ruined sentinels. A total of five of them. There is one in every single door that is not progress. Thankfully, not every Ruin Sentinel door has only a Ruin Sentinel in it. Some have treasure chests or just, you know, items lying about. But overall, there really isn't much to do here aside from being frustrated with those. Um, oddly enough, on New Game Plus, they don't seem to respawn after you kill them once. On New Game, however, I have had to fight them several times. I don't know why that is, but that's just how it is, I guess. And yeah, I don't really need to show you how to fight the Sentinels, so as we go through all of them, I'll just speed that up. In the meantime, let's watch me lose against a Phantom. If the Red Phantom bows first, I usually return the favor, but I don't really expect them to do it anyway. But if he wants an honorable duel, I guess he can have it. It's not like I'm doing good or anything anyway. F 
katanas are kind of infamous for their weird hitboxes online. There is one called the washing pole, which has a really long range, and some extra phantom range. This one has phantom range too, of course. A lot of weapons have, actually. But yeah. For now, enjoy Veliger's dialogue while we kill all of the ruined sentinels. Enjoy. You are a guest of our castle. I am the Chancellor, Veliger. Do you seek an audience with my lord, King Vendrick? Unfortunately, his highness is absent. My lord, the king has... The queen has taken him. My lord made magnificent findings on souls. An accomplishment for the ages. He vanquished the four great ones and built this kingdom upon their souls. Our king has watched over this land since ages long, long ago. King Vendrick, we must fight back, or the giants will take Drangleic. The king had a dear queen, a woman of unparalleled beauty. Long ago, the queen came to us, alone, from a faraway land. She warned our lord of the looming threat across the seas, of the giants. The king crossed the ocean and defeated the giants with the queen at his side. commandeered their power and created the golems. With the golems, the king created this castle. To celebrate victory and to show his love, his gratitude to his queen. The queen brought peace to this land and to her king. A peace so deep, it was like the dark. Is this some sort of a dream? Where am I? What has happened to our castle? Who are you? And by whose permission do you stand before me? Welcome, visitor. Our guests are treated with honor. This is the way of our castle. Tell me if you should require anything. So, Veliger being a ghost that we can actually pass through, so he's an actual ghost. Yeah, he is not quite that collected anymore, but... He still knows enough to know that Vendrig went to the land of the giants and he brought home a prize that allowed him to build this castle by creating golems that did it for him. This was something that, well, the queen kind of sort of inspired him to do. But anyway, yeah. Uh, there's only one door in here that you need to go through to progress. It is the one immediately to the right. And with this particular build we're using right now, it's a little bit harder to kill those guys because we can't stun lock them with a nest talk. With a great sword, two handing it, we definitely can. And oh yeah, that's what I mean by respawning ruined sentinels. Let's just make sure that that guy doesn't annoy us any further. Oh sweet, I'm glad I took a hit for a couple dark arrows. That's a worth a little more in my book, but yeah, you only need to kill all of the Ruin Sentinels if you want a Ferris Lockstone, which is the second door on the left, a Mastodon Greatsword, which is the second door on the right, or a Royal Soldier's Ring plus one, which is the uh, door in the back to the right. If you don't need any of those, just 
just open the first door on the right and you're fine. And of course there is a small area in the door in the back to the left, but we're not gonna explore that today. We're gonna save that for a later time. And yes, look at this. I was really clever stripping down because only armor gets affected by the acid and rings do too, of course. So I guess it's not that clever after all. So yeah, if you want to go through the acid, just strip naked, remove your rings, and then go through it. Whether it's worth it or not is completely up to you. In this case, at least, I really could have done without it. And because I was too dumb to unequip my rings, I will now have to pick some others. But hey, I have some options. I normally only really switch around rings for specific purposes anyway, so I probably still have rings on that I don't need anymore. This area is very, very slightly reminiscent of Analondo in that it is the place where the king lived. The king of Analondo being Gwyn. Here it's Vendrick. They both fulfill the same general role in their respective games. Um, they are both kind of rulers of kingdoms that um, have fallen, so to speak. And we're told from very early on in the game that we need to hunt them down. And if you watch my lore videos, you will know that I believe that the history of Dark Souls has a very cyclical nature and we're now in the however many cycle. There are slight variations once in a while, maybe even this time, who knows. We will know as soon as we find Vendrick at the very least. The constants in the cycles as far as we can tell so far is that there's always a kingdom or rather a world on the brink of its end. And then there's also a king who has something to do with it and we're supposed to succeed them somehow. Then however there's that whole thing with the queen which was not mentioned in the first game at all. but. Apparently, as it seems, it is pretty relevant here. But for all we know, there was a queen similar to the Queen Vendrick had in Dark Souls 1, and we just were never told that. As soon as we learn more about that queen, it might even add a new layer to the story of Dark Souls 1. If we're willing to accept that, despite not being told anything of it in the first game, of course. But to get a little bit back into the action, this guy only aggers if you get really close to him, so you can just stay in the room and deal with the other two if you wish. And this is a guard break, but for some reason it did not trigger properly. Normally it's supposed to knock him down a bit and you can do a repost type attack. And this is a portrait of the queen. If we get too close to it, we get cursed rather quickly. So. It's best not to do that, but it might of course give us a little bit of a hint as to the nature of the queen. Meanwhile, this phantom has nothing to do with the queen. However, she is familiar. She's wearing clothes of a character that we've already met. I wonder if you can tell who it is. We just really haven't seen her in quite a while and we only talked to her when it was necessary. And now she's invading us. We'll be learning more about that later. And maybe we'll even confront her, who knows. As far as NPC invaders go, she's one of the easiest to deal with because her range is very limited and she can be easily stun locked. I mean, just look at that. The Aztoc being a fairly long range weapon, of course, helps a lot. With the maze, we might have had a little more trouble, but still, it wouldn't have been much of a problem. The maze, of course, would have had a higher chance of stun locking her, which in her case doesn't really matter because she has basically zero poise anyway, which means that she will get stun locked really easily. Poise, by the way, only really matters if you are currently attacking, so it dictates whether your attack can be interrupted more easily or not. So ideally, you'll attack phantoms and demons whenever they're not attacking, so you can stun lock them. And this ladder is easily missable, but it is actually a pretty nice ladder because, well, as though the ladder itself wasn't as easily missable enough already, there's also a hidden door here. 
which leads us to a bonfire. Of course, that's not all. There's another ladder right here. And this is above the room with the acid, and those dragon statue things are what are spitting the acid down there. You might have noticed that. It's more annoying than anything if you're down there. And it was basically a coup, and since those guys uh, did their acid spit as I attacked them. They normally just do that if you're too close to them, or rather, if you're down in that room. This bonfire is really close to the boss, but due to it being very easily miserable, a lot of people don't even know about it, it seems. Because when I help out here as a phantom, most people don't even go down there to get it, even though I gesture vitally to get them to open the door. But I guess it's a hard thing to communicate with only gestures. Or the hello and thank you carvings or whatever. But yeah, there is the queen. Let's have a chat. You have fought admirably on your journey, cursed undead. I am Nishandra, Queen of Dranglik. A true monarch carries the weight of their souls. The last king of this land, King Vendrick, as he was called. He found the strength to rule his people. And when the undead were born, cursed, he found more strength to face them. But in the end, he never took the true throne. Visit Vendrick. We have no need for two rulers. I like that she... Sounds kind of annoyed and impatient when she tells us to visit Vendrick. But anyway. Right around this corner is the fog gate to the boss. And I wonder what amazing boss fight this will be. Let's have a look. Oh, it's another one of those. Two dragon riders instead of one. This dragon rider here, the red one. He has exactly the same stats as the other one we've already faced. And the black one which is currently standing uh, up there and shooting arrows at us, he has basically no health. Like, you can kill him really easily. Other than that, this is your typical multi-enemy boss fight you should be used to by now. You can, if you stick uh, to the uh, back part of the area, have the Dragon Rider attack the platform that the other Dragon Rider is standing on, and he'll fall down. Eventually though, the second Dragon Rider will just go down on his own. And in fact, right here, he's dropping down. Now we can attack him, and he's gonna take a lot more damage, or rather, his health will go down a lot faster, because he doesn't really have as much HP. But he now does exactly the same things as the other Dragon Rider, but his colors are a little different, I suppose. That's about the only difference there is between them now. I don't even think he's gonna use his bow and arrow again, even if you get really far away from him. They aren't really hard at all. The most difficult part of this fight is that there's two of them. And even if you're kind of impatient like I am here, you can still do quite a bit of damage to them. You can poison them, of course, as you've already seen. So casting Dark Fog like I did could be a good idea, but you need to make sure that they're in the fog for long enough for them to actually get poisoned. Other than that, you can go wild here. Essentially, it's a boss fight you've already done, only now you're much more powerful and have more options to do stuff with. The worst thing they can do in my opinion is that shield bash we just saw because it immediately breaks your guard, which gives the other dragon rider a good chance to attack. 
and do a little more damage because you'll still be staggered. But at least I survived it even on New Game Plus. Personally, instead of fighting those two dragon riders on foot, I would have liked to maybe fight a dragon rider actually riding a dragon. That would have been a cool fight and I wouldn't have minded fighting a dragon rider a second time if that were the case. Just, you know, killing the dragon and then the dragon rider or something like that. I'd be down for that. Instead we have this, and we only get one dragon rider soul for defeating them, instead of two. Still, as a total in the game, we do get two Dragon Rider Souls, which allows us to make two of the Dragon Rider's weapons. The bow, in my opinion, is one of the best bows in the game, has some drawbacks of course, because it takes a lot more stamina and draws a lot slower, but we have covered that already. For now it looks like we're already done with those guys, thankfully. At least it's not as long of a fight as the fight against the gargoyles, but the gargoyles can be really quickly killed if you have the right weapon type, like dual wielding heavy weapons. It'll just murder them. The dragon riders and the gargoyles, I mean. But hey, one step closer to finding Vendrick. And here is our stopping point in form of a bonfire, as well as Benhard. Let's talk to him before we stop. Oh, well met, friend. Good to see you well. Yes, <laughs> very good indeed. I journeyed from the distant east to perfect my swordsmanship. A legend has it that powerful beings slumber in this land. This sword has been in my family for generations. And only a real man can wield it true. I may face any man or a man or beast, but none shall be a match for my sword. <laughs> this land is a right mess, eh? King's gone. The people have a mad glint in their eyes. The land itself is overrun by terrible beasts. No better place to test my sword, eh? <laughs> Next time, we're actually gonna summon Ben Hart. For now, though, we're just gonna rest at this bonfire and call it a day. I hope you enjoyed this episode. See you again next time.